at this time to speak your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, I preached about the lore of the shadows, shallows, and the temptation that we as human beings have to go to shallow water and, and avoid deep water, but God has called us to deep water. Right, right. His church, his people. About an hour and a half after that, in Sutherland, Texas, a man walked up to the church with his flak jacket on and his and a semi-automatic weapon with an extra large clip in it. And they say he wasn't supposed to get it, but anybody who, anybody can buy one because it's legal. And as he walked towards the church, he started shooting. He had so much firepower that the bullets went through the clapboards, through the, uh, the steel. He walked around the church, shooting through the church and hitting people before he went in and then went up and down the pews. 26 it's 26, it might be 27 now, and people die. Yeah, yeah. More were wounded. But was, and that's disturbing. This is the second mass shooting that has occurred in this country in a little over a month. What's going on? And what grabbed my attention the most was the reactions. Because we've had so many mass shootings, we want to normalize it. Right. Right. Say to the folks, uh, our prayers are with you, and then move on. Not the time to talk about gun control, now don't politicize it, we'll talk about it another time. Uh, that was said in Las Vegas and we never got around to it and now we have Sutherland, Texas and we're still saying the same thing and still wanting us to move on. And one of the reactions that just there are folks in Sutherland who are not going to church today. As one lady who said who was survived, she was shot and she survived, she said, I'm not going back to church. I'll, I'll stay in my home and read my Bible. And then some of the other church, I want to call them Christians, but okay, I'll call them fallen Christians. Some of the reactions are, well, they should have armed guards there. Texas is a carry state. So instead of leaving them in your pickup truck, bring them on into the sanctuary. Right, right. One gentleman, an FBI pro, former FBI profiler, said, in our church, we, we train the people how to shoot. And then once service starts, we lock the doors, one way in, one way out. So we're ready. The church of God. We all will be packing a side on. And then we'll come talk about the Prince of Peace. That was the start of the week. And it got more craziness happening. Right, right. 
throughout the week, more things that we would never think that would be openly discussed. A senatorial candidate from Alabama, a sexual predator. And he says, that's just political and we are supposed to ignore it. What is going on? In one week, fear, panic, confusion. What was that? Uh, I don't know who did it because I don't listen to rap, but there was one, one, one rapper said, I'm, I'm about to lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. And then one of the residents said, we never thought it would happen here. It shouldn't happen. We're a white community. We're a church gone community. It shouldn't happen here. Can't happen here. Well, that means that it should happen somewhere else. But the sad news is it could only happen in America because we're the only country where you can buy semi-automatic weapons and large clips legally. You don't have to go to the black market, you can go to the gun store. Pass the background check, and in this case, you don't even have to have the background check. This is crazy. This is crazy, and there's, you know, when you think about it, it ought to put a knot in your stomach. To feel the panic and the anxiety of this, uh, of this unknown, un, unexpected shooting becoming a mass, uh, becoming normalized. Well, in my spirit, I turn to the Second Kings, the story about Isaiah. And look at his servant. I said, yeah, we can identify with his servant. The young man who got up in the morning was probably just a teenager or so. And he was going to get the firewood or whatever it was to prepare the day's meal. And when he walked out of the tent or uh, looked around, there was an army that hadn't been there last night. An army full of chariots and weaponry, swords, and he panicked. He panicked and he ran back to his, his master, Elijah, the holy man, and, and says, uh, uh, what are we going to do? There's, a, there's an army out there. and they're all, they're, They've got weapons, chariots and swords. And he, Elijah has a different reaction than what this young man expected. He said, don't be afraid. The more of who are with us than there are with them. Don't, don't get upset. Don't be afraid. The first thing out of his mouth is don't be afraid. Do not fear. And that's a word for us this morning. Do not fear. Don't give in to fear because fear is the enemy of faith. See, fear makes you cower, makes you hide. Faith gives you the courage to step out. Fear will make you panic, but faith gives you patience. When you're afraid, you cut and run, but when you're faithful, uh, you get the strength to just hang on in there, no matter what the circumstance. Fear will make you lose sleep. But faith... Faith in God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, with faith in that God who is, who is always good. With faith in that God of grace, of mercy. You can sleep and rest even in the midst of a storm. Fear tries to keep you in the dark. But, but faith always wants to bring you to the light. Fear will keep you mad. It will keep you sad. It will keep you negative. It will keep you pessimistic. But faith, faith in a God that does good and loves good, that'll make you, well, it'll give you joy. 
unspeakable joy. Faith make fear makes you doubt. Faith makes you trust. Fear you will overlook the obvious. That's what's happening in our country. Fear. People are so afraid they overlook what's obviously ye happening. But faith helps you to see clearly. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear capture you. Don't let fear grip your heart. Don't act in fear. You're going to make mistakes. There are more of us more that are with us than they're with them. That's what Elijah says, but Elijah's no fool. He looks at that young man and he, and he can see the look on his face that he's not convinced. The, those are good words, but he can see that the panic is beginning to rise in that man. His, his servant's muscles are beginning to tense. He's beginning to lock up. His sweat is starting to roll down his, his face. Uh, Elijah knows if he doesn't do something quick, this man is going to be out of control. So he prays, and he prays to God, open his eyes. Open his eyes. Help him to see clearly. Help him to see that even though there's an army outside, there's an army that's better equipped and, and, and more in number protecting us. God answers that prayer and he opens his eyes. And what's he, what he sees is that there's a mountain full of horses and chariots of fire. And in that moment, in that moment, the servant, the servant settles down. All he needed to see was what? Well, was that one moment of clarity. It only takes a moment, a moment to see that when your evildoers assail you, your adversaries and foe, they shall stumble and fall. It, it only takes a moment to, to, to remember that, 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 that he will build a hedge around you. A moment to remember there are more with us than they are with them. Moment in the midst of your storm, he's the one that stills the storm. It only takes a moment to remember when you're on your sickbed that he is the divine physician. It only takes a moment when you've messed up and you premeditated he did what was wrong. You sin, it only takes a moment to re remember he's a forgiving God. A moment of clarity that gets you on your path to righteousness. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. No matter what you face, we don't need to arm ourselves. We don't need to have a shooting range out in the back. We don't have to be afraid of anything. He's with us. He's with you. When you tossing and turning, at night can't sleep because you're worried about how am I going to pay the bills? He'll see you through. Does that mean he's going to just shower down dollars from heaven? Does it mean you're going to hit the lottery? No, he'll see you through. Even if you have to go through bankruptcy, he'll see you through. Just a moment. See, and, and the problem is it's so easy for us to forget. Your business is on shaky ground. Yeah, but the ground is in the hand of the Lord. 
He is your strength from day to day. Didn't you just finish singing that? All it takes is a moment so that you can roll over and go to sleep. When you're sick and your body, he's there. He hasn't left you in your sick room by yourself. He doesn't leave you on the table. He's guiding the hand of the surgeon. And it only takes a moment for you to just say yes, Lord. Oh, but the preacher, folks get sick and they die. Yes, they do. What was that hymn? At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away was there by faith. I received my sight. What did you see? I saw a, a, a savior man, a good man, dying on Calvary's cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I see an open tomb. He didn't stay dead. He's alive and well. And he said, I am with you always. Even till the end of the earth. Always and always. And everything. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll keep you. When you have to say goodbye to your loved one. When, when they cross Jordan and they, you are on the other side. He'll, he'll, he, he, he's still there. He'll hold your hand and he'll keep you. And then you just need a moment to remember death. There is no sting grave. You have no victory. There is a place that's prepared for a prepared people. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. In my father's house. Are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And as I go to prepare a place, I'm, I'm coming back. Receive you to myself. Just a moment. With all of the noise and all of the foolishness in this world and social media and everything else, it's easy to forget. That there is a God who sits high, looks low, reaches down, pulls up, makes the crooked straight, rough places plain, lifts up valleys, brings down mountains, a Lord who will be with you in all things. He says, all you need to do is two or three gathered together in my name and I will be there in the midst of the living God. But you know, a whole lot of folks don't believe that. I'll show up when I show up. But I can tell you, this week, you may spend some sleepless nights. There's some trouble, something's going to trouble you. But put it in God's hands. He's with you. It only takes a moment to remember. Lest I forget, Gethsemane. Lest I forget, thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Ah.